Hello and welcome to a very special Warhammer Wednesday. This will be my review of the Chaos Space Marines Abaddon the Despoiler model from Games Workshop. He will cost you £37.50. It pains me to say that price because it is expensive. He costs the same as Robute Gilliman or Roboot Gilliman. So what I'll do is I'll just talk about the character, the model, how easy it was to build. I'll show you some size comparisons and then I'll go through his 8th edition rules. Firstly, he's one of those key characters in the Warhammer 40,000 universe. He's had a number of crusades. Uh, he's been around since the Horus Heresy. He was good chums with uh, Horus himself. And for the past 10,000 years or so, he's been launching many crusades uh, from the Eye of Terror with varying degrees of success. Very recently, he, spoiler warning, exploded Cadia and has now been involved with Vigilus. In fact, Vigilus Ablaze is mainly a chaos book. There's not a single Imperial uh, Space Marine data sheet in there at all. It was kind of foreshadowed in the first um, book, Vigilus Defiant, with Hark and World Claimer. Then we had the Shadow Spear box set, which includes a small chaos army. And then the next releases was uh, Abaddon, Vigilus Ablaze, the Chaos Space Marine Codex, the Chaos Space Marines and the Noctilith Crown. We've still got the Lord Discordant to go, uh, the Master of Executions and the Apostle and Dark Disciples. But today we're focusing on Abaddon the Despoiler and I hope I do him justice. Before I look at the model itself and uh, have a look at all of his detail, I just want to draw your attention to the box. Uh, the box is fantastic. Um, quite simplistic view of him there, um, but then if you spin it round, you've got uh, various um, head options. You get three heads in the um, box. It draws your attention to Abaddon without the cloak and with the cloak. Also um, his right lightning claw, the Talon of Horus, um, and his sword, the Drac Nien, and little bits of detail on that scenic base. If we open the box up, you will find the Eye of Terror, well, not the Eye of Terror, um, box art with Chaos Space Marines about in the despoiler writing, and then on the reverse, you get a nice bit of artwork for him too. I will be comparing him to Rebute Gilliman, uh, later on in the review. They are similarly sized, same base, and um, both have quite scenic bases as well. So um, I can see why Games Workshop wanted to um, price him the way they have. The instruction booklet is another point of uh, order <laughs> um, in that it's uh, very impressive. Uh, you actually have um, the, I say, original kind of CAD designs there. Um, that are taken straight off their computer, which is brilliant. Um, lots of shadowing and uh, lighting effects on there. Very detailed. Um, you can see the shadowing in there. Um, it shows him with the cloak and without the cloak. Um, and also it shows uh, the internal workings. I've actually put some detail inside. I don't know if anybody's ever not going to have the front part of his Terminator armor. But if they so do so, you've got a bit of detail to work with. Um, very straightforward to put together. Uh, not many steps. You'll have a lot of fun building him. And uh, to top it all off, you've uh, got the 8th edition rules for him as well. So that makes three um, places where you can pick the, the rules up for him. Um, both in there, uh, in there, in the Codex, and Vigilus Ablaze. So let's have a look at all of his detail then. As you can see, a uh, fair amount of detail. If I completely zoom in, um, you can see he, the grimace on his face. He's looking very, very angry, reminiscent of the artwork that I just showed you on the box. Um, the sword has lots of detail, both on the, on the grip, uh, double-handed grip, rather like a claymore, really. Um, spikes there um, and serrations. And then you've got all these laughing um, demonic faces. Uh, and the same mirrored on the reverse. Uh, the Talon of Horus, likewise, is very detailed. Um, you can see all the, I want to say hinges, um, but you know what I mean, in, in each of those claws. Very spiky, one of the best lightning claws I've ever seen. And obviously, he's got the, uh, the Storm Bolter. Obviously, he's got the um, gauntlet-mounted Storm Bolter with, if you see the attention to detail, the screaming faces at the exit ports. Um, loads of detail on his 
greaves with this uh, many fanged kind of skull and then another skull on the other side this hanging skull from a chain um, this demonic kind of sigil here and uh, on the left hand side there is another icon um, but obviously if you choose to have the cape on there then that will cover it up and um, the cape wraps very very nicely around him and slots on the base too quite well and also it helps uh, with the motion of uh, this this cloth as well if you choose the cape um, but you don't have to put put him uh, you don't have to put that on him if you don't want to likewise this uh, trophy rack you don't necessarily need to put the trophy rack on there either um, so you could have him without the cloak without the trophy rack without the top knot um, and he just looked like an absolutely awesome Terminator Captain, Chaos Terminator Captain or Chaos Terminator Lord. Um, on the base, you've got this kind of broken, bent uh, Aquila, I want to call it, and then a Primaris being stood on. Um, I think you can see actually see the, the inside of him, the rib cage and stuff. And uh, I'm pretty sure he's holding a grenade there, and it's a vortex grenade. So. I don't mean to put any spoilers out there, but um, let's just say Abaddon is no more after this engagement. <laughs> no, that's that's not true. Um, but he is holding his uh, hand in such a way. Uh, it's kind of like curled, isn't it? Um, but yeah, pl plenty of skulls and things going on on the base. Um, and shells, all kinds of things. And then you've got this torch as well um, with the Aquila. The trophy rack is quite interesting. You've got four normal skulls, but one of them, if we just enhance, whoop, has an Inquisition um, symbol on there. You've also got a Tyranid skull and a Primary Space Marine skull as well, um, which has clearly been taken in the past, what, 100 years that Primaris have been around? So, extremely detailed, lots going on. Um, I don't think there's too much going on. A very, very good mirror image um, of uh, Gilliman and Chaos. Yes, we've got um, Magnus and we've got Mortarion um, as the big, big um, players uh, in 40k for Chaos. But now we've finally got um, Abaddon as well. And here are the um, spare parts that you'll get with Abaddon. Um, you'll get this face where he's... He's not having a too bad day. It's not too bad. He's just grimacing a little bit. It's not like he's really angry. He's got he's turned anger on. Um, and then this one, which is Bane Baden. Ah, Galga. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah. So. They're the, the two different heads that you get for him, or front faces. Um, you don't have to put the top knot on if you don't want to. It's just you'll be left with a hole in his head on the top. Um, but you can just fill that with green stuff, I suppose, and just give it a little polish with these Max, and he'll be fine. Let's carry on with the rest of my review. So what I'll do now is uh, just go through some size comparisons. Um, so I thought it'd be fair just to compare him with some Chaos models, um, and of which I will just compare him to a normal kind of Chaos Space Marine. Um, let's have a little look. I don't have any of the new Chaos Terminator Space Marines because they come out uh, on Saturday and I've already said that I'm um, not going to pick them up yet. But I will be comparing him to uh, a fair few other miniatures. So that's where he stands. Uh, Chaos Space Marine is about, I want to say, almost chest height to him. Um, so he's definitely huge uh, compared to all of your other models and will be uh, a big focal point. For some reason, I wanted to compare him to a uh, Hellbrute, which is right here. Hellbrute is bigger um, than him. Uh, and also Hellbrute's not on that big uh, extra base look. But yeah, Hellbrute is... Uh, taller but um but but for size purposes anyway and um, they're on exactly the same base my fitic blight hauler is right here he's bigger than a my fitic blight hauler if that's anything to go by and then i wanted to do just a couple of crazy size comparisons um because i had them all out 
when I was looking for um, some Death Guard Terminators, which I couldn't find. Um, I've got uh, Mortarion, which, yeah, I mean, that's just the difference, isn't it, between a um, Primark and, uh, yeah, uh, a regular Terminator. So, <laughs> there you go. Um, that's the size comparison between Mortarion and Abaddon. And then I just wanted to put a, a greater demon of Nurgle in behind him. Just for giggles, really, more than anything, just to show you how massive and chubby the greater demon of Nurgle is. Anyway, hope that's helped. Let's move on to some Imperium size comparisons. So comparing him to a standard Space Marine, there he is. He's going to absolutely dwarf these guys. These look like little, um, well, they just look tiny compared to him. Um, you have a few of these normal Space Marines around him and he's, he dwarfs them um, way more, uh, dwarfs them far more than uh, you know his previous model did. Even Intercessors, if we throw an Intercessor in there, he's still way, way taller. Look at the size of that. Way taller than these uh, big Intercessors. Although he is, you know, standing on that big base. I mean, if we put the Intercessor there, he almost goes up to his gorget, I wanna say, wanna call it? Anyway, or his neckline. So that's him next to those Imperial models. Next to Gilly Man, which I've managed to find from somewhere. Um, there you go. They should be around that way, shouldn't they, I suppose? Um, there you go. That is the money shot. No, that is the, uh, that is the uh, awesome uh, mirror of both of the models, both got the, the long swords. Whose is bigger? Let's see. <laughs> it's very childish, I know, but um, yeah. The, the Emperor's sword is, is uh, longer. Uh, blade length, yeah, it's a fair bit longer too, but uh, claw-wise, fist-wise, I'd probably give it to the Talon. Um, but really, really awesome uh, sculpts. They're both £37.50, and they both complement each other very well. But clearly one's a Primark and uh, one has been, you know, enlarged somewhat with uh, ruinous powers. But for a Chaos Army, this is as close as you're going to get to a Primark, uh, other than, you know, the changed ones like Mortarion and Magnus. Um, hopefully we'll see Fulgrim one day, but again, he's been turned into a demon uh, and so on. Final little uh, comparison I want to make is just with Marnius. Oh dear, poor Marnius Kalgar. He had quite a bum bum deal against um Abaddon he really did um he tried he tried his best he really did but um no was uh what Abaddon did to him I mean size wise they are Abaddon is bigger definitely bigger just just by a bit though I think Abaddon has more presence though that's the thing um but yeah still both good models but uh, I thought I'd do that comparison because they both have huge parts in the Vigilus Ablaze um, book and the Vigilus campaign. So there they are, two legends, larger than life. Do you have a sneaky uh, side comparison with uh, another Primark? This is Primark Central today, isn't it? But here's uh, Sanguinius, handless Sanguinius, um, about to skewer this right through uh, Abaddon, or will Abaddon just claw through um, Sanguinius's uh, wings. Who knows? But uh, I thought I'd just show you a little size comparison with them. Okay, so this is my part of the review where I will go through all of Abaddon the Despoiler's rules. Like I said, you get the rules in uh, the box with him. Uh, you can also find them in your brand new 8th edition, 8th edition, 2nd edition? 8th <laughs> edition, the 2nd print of the Chaos Space Marine um, Codex and Vigilus Ablaze. Um, you'll find his rules all throughout all of there. Um, clearly you're going to miss out on a bit of story if you just get your Chaos Space Marine Codex. If you want all of the story and um, what he was doing in Vigilus, get the Vigilus Ablaze book um, too. So you'll find him as an HQ choice with a power points cost of a 12 and a match play points cost of 240 points. Quite pricey, but a lot of schools will cost you another 140 points on top of that. What do you get uh, for your 240 points? Well, you get a movement speed of six inches, which is very decent because Terminators, as you know, can only move five inches. His weapon skill and ballistic skill are both two plus, 
you wouldn't expect anything less than that. His strength is five, his toughness is five, he's got eight wounds, six attacks, it's very important that. Leadership of 10, of course, and a save of two plus. Abaddon the Despoiler is a single model armed with Drachnien and the Talon of Horus. Only one of this model may be included in your army. So the Talon of Horus, it's got two profiles, one for shooting, one for melee. We'll go through the shooting profile first. It's a 24 inch rapid fire two, strength four, AP minus one and damage D3. That's pretty good. It's good that it's rapid fire two, it's good that it's AP minus one and it's good that it's damage D3. However, it's melee profile is strength of the user times two, so that'd be strength 10, AP minus four, and damage D3. It'd be great if it was damage three, but hey, it's damage D3. And then the sword. Now, is this sword any good? I'm still on the fence with it. Put it in the comments below, help me out. It's a melee weapon, strength plus one, so that's strength of six, AP is minus three, and damage is three. Very decent, especially with the six attacks. However, it's got a little ability attached to it. Roll a d6 each time the bearer fights. On a one, they suffer one mortal wound and cannot use this weapon further during this phase. That's a bit debilitating. Do you have to roll a d6 uh, when you want to use a sword? Um, or do you just roll a d6 every time he fights? That's really interesting because, well, I mean, I know it's statistically um, difficult to get a one every 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 time he fights and also when are you going to be when are you going to be able to get into close combat with him but still that's pretty poor that he can possibly lose a mortal wound um, and he's only got eight of them however on a two plus they can make that many additional attacks with this weapon that could be quite horrific because if you get a six and um, when he's fighting you can have 12 attacks of strength six ap minus three damage three so is that 36 damage in total he could whip out using that sword? Anyway, that's his weapons. Abilities, death to the false emperor. You should know what that means by now, but uh, basically each time you roll a hit of a six plus in the fight phase and you were targeting an Imperium unit, you can immediately make an extra attack uh, against the same user unit using the same weapon. <clears throat> so that's pretty good. So you get a uh, D6 with um, Drachnien and you get your 12 attacks. And let's just say half of them are sixes. You get another six attacks. That Death to the False Emperor can definitely help stack models that have a lot of attacks. His other abilities then, the War Master. If your army is battle forged and Abaddon the Despoiler is your Warlord, you receive two additional command points. That's very good. Dark Destiny. Abaddon the Despoiler has a four plus invulnerable save. In addition, all damage suffered by Abaddon the Despoiler is halved, rounding up. Lord of the Black Legion. You can reroll hit rolls for friendly Black Legion while they are within six inches of Abaddon the Despoiler. Very good. This is one of the reasons why you want a load of Terminators around him. Mark of Chaos Ascendant. Friendly Heretic Astartes units automatically pass morale tests while they are within 12 inches of Abaddon the Despoiler. That's pretty good too. Teleport strike. During deployment, you can set up a Baden in a teleportarium chamber instead of placing him on the battlefield. At the end of any of your movement phases, he can use a teleport strike to arrive on the battlefield. Set him up anywhere on the battlefield that is more than nine inches away from any enemy models. Brilliant. You can just teleport in. His keywords, chaos, corn, Nurgle, Slanesh, Zinch, Heretic Astartes, Black Legion, Character, Infantry, Chaos Lord, Terminator, and Abaddon the Despoiler. Before I go on to a summary, I just want to compare him to Marnius Kalgar in armour of Heraclus. Um, because, fluff-wise it makes sense, and also rules-wise, they are similar um, points cost. Um, power points cost, uh, Marnius is 200, um, but then is... Um, Victrix Guard, Aaron Extra, 70 points. So it's 270 points for Marnius with his uh, Victrix Guard, um, but it's 240 for um, Abaddon. So just comparing them one on one, Abaddon would be more points cost against Marnius. They have very similar weapons in terms of the shooting, but Marnius' uh, Gauntlets of Ultramar are a solid damage too, rather than. Um, the Talons of Horus and being a damage D3. The Gauntlets of Ultramar are a strength times two. Unfortunately, Marnius is the same strength as any other Space Marine. He's a strength of four, so he's only getting that strength eight. Whereas the Talon of Horus obviously boosts Abaddon's strength to 10 
and has that AP minus four. Marnius only has AP minus three, but they both have D3 damage. Marnius has the four plus and vulnerable save and also has the same damage suffered is halved ability that um, Abaddon has. You can also reroll failed hit rolls uh, for friendly ultramarines, just like Abaddon. And you also get the uh, additional two command points if Marnius is your warlord. You can also reroll failed morale tests for the unit, but Marnius can't teleport strike. Friendly units don't automatically pass um, morale tests. Um, you could just have the ability to reroll them, unlike the Mark of Chaos for a bad and where if, if they're within 12 inches, they automatically pass them. And also Marnius doesn't have that death to the false emperor. Well, clearly he doesn't have that. Um, but what I mean by that is Marnius doesn't have anything extra that um, can stack attacks. Um, they both have the same number of attacks, but obviously if you're using Drachnien, you could have a potential 12 attacks and then depending on your role for death to the false emperor you could have more than 12 attacks whereas Manus just gets his six they both have the same wounds they both have the same toughness and um, abaddon actually has a higher leadership um, but they both have the same saves um, and the same movement speed and the same weapon skill and ballistic skill so they're quite evenly matched except that abaddon has the better weapons and is a bit trickier in terms of that death to the false emperor. I'd like to see them go toe to toe, but possibly even have Marnius's Victrix on a guard in there as well. But if you have them in there, then they're getting, you know, that's an extra eight attacks and they have better saves than Marnius. They've got the two plus normal and a three plus invulnerable because they have those um, storm shields. But still, it would be a fun matchup nonetheless. So in summary, I think he's an absolutely fantastic model. I'm an Imperium player through and through. I've got, well, you've seen my army videos. I've got an absolutely gigantic Space Marine army with a Titan Legion and Knights and all the rest of it. But I really like the look of Abad and the Despoiler um, and I'm so chuffed with all of the new um, Chaos Space Marine releases um, for this edition so far. They've been a long time coming. I'm pleased that they've had a rebirth and actually they've released more models than I, than I thought. Um, I'd rather them put more of their creative energy and things in these kind of models and the Xenos models than just churning out different types of Space Marine armor like the Phobos stuff, which I found very boring of the Shadow Spear set, which you will get reviews of in the next couple of weeks. So if you like Space Marines and you like Primaris, stay tuned to the channel for those. Anyway, I'd really like to hear what you guys think of Abaddon. If you have the model, if you painted him, what do you guys think? What do you think of his uh, rules as well? Put it in the comments below. Thank you ever so much for joining me today. Thank you for watching Death to the False Emperor.